Now we're in part six of your cardiac rhythm interpretation book, and this uh, is the section of ECD exercises, and it's on page 84, 85. And I strongly recommend that if you haven't done the exercises already in the workbook, that you do those first before you come to this uh, presentation. If you don't have access to the book, um, then what you might want to do is pause this presentation now, take a close look at this ECG, go through the steps, you know, rate, PUAs, PR, QRS, ratio, rhythm, and, and then make your final interpretation before I continue on here. So uh, if you want to pause now, go ahead and do that. So let's go through this um, step by step, and you'll notice right off the bat, the first thing you notice is that there's an abrupt change in the heart rate on this rhythm strip. So let's um, as I say, very important not to interpret ECGs based on pattern recognition. When you do that, you tend to make mistakes. Um, if you go through a step-by-step -step process consistently with each and every ECG, number one, you get very fast at it. Number two, you're much more likely to be accurate in your interpretation than if you just go by pattern recognition. So we start with rate. Um, the heart rate in the beginning is about 80 beats per minute, and we can actually count that out. So. Um, here's a QRS that falls in a dark line. The heart rate here is 300, 150, 175, 80 approximately. So we have an initial heart rate of 80, and then it goes up to somewhere between 180 and 200, and some might argue 210. So if we find uh, a QRS that falls on a, close to a dark line, let's see here. And what you can do is you can just, um, you know, take a piece of paper and uh, mark up mark off a couple of R waves and then move that piece of paper over to, um, you know, one of the dark lines. That's probably the easiest way to do it. But let's just pick one here. Um, uh, this one's fairly close to a dark line. So the heart rate's 300, 150. Um, that's uh, 180, uh, 210 roughly, but, but 200 because this one's just off the line. So between 180 and, and 200. And you'll notice uh, that this goes from a sinus rhythm where we have P wave QRS, P wave QRS, P wave QRS, and suddenly in a single beat, we have an increase in this heart rate, dramatic increase up to 180 to 200. There are P waves in the um, initially in the underlying rhythm, and then in the second part here, you'll notice that there are glitches, and your guess is as good as mine as to what those glitches are. Uh, presumably, part of this is ventricular repolarization or the T wave, and part of this is some semblance of atrial depolarization. But it really doesn't matter. What matters is that we have this regular heart rate, um, and then it suddenly becomes very, very fast, which is not normal. And most of the ECGs you and I are going to take are on resting adults, right? So this is absolutely not normal. PR interval is uh, 0.14 to 0.16. And what I do is I look for a P wave that falls in a dark line. And this one falls pretty close to a dark line. The beginning of the QRS is about here, a millimeter off the dark line. And so that's actually uh, four small squares times 0 0.04 gives you 0 0.16 second for PR interval. The QRS is narrow in uh, this part and in this part. It's less than 0 0.12 second throughout, and that's important. That tells us that the... Uh, wave of depolarization goes down the bundle of hiss and down both bundle branches simultaneously. The ratio is one to one in the first part, but we can't really discern P waves in the second part, just glitches there. The rhythm is um, uh, regular in uh, the first part and regular in the second part, which is important. And so when you see a very abrupt onset of tachycardia like this, uh, this is not normal. This is not the, your typical adrenaline rush where you know suddenly you're scared or you're you're put into a fight or flight uh, situation and your heart rate increases because when you experience that adrenaline rush, your heart rate increases over three, four, five, six beats, not in a single beat. Uh, when you see this kind of abrupt change, this is a normal sinus rhythm with a bout of PSVT with a heart rate of between 180 and 200. Again, as I said in an earlier presentation, what we want to determine for the patient. Uh, in terms of reporting and documenting is how long are these bouts of PSVT, um, how often do they occur, what are the patient's signs and symptoms when they have these bouts of PSVT, do they get lightheaded, dizzy, nauseated, do they vomit, do they have syncopal episodes, that's uh, critically important information.